There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and visible chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to the first video of the nuclear chemistry chapter. In this video, we're going to cover um, the first dot point, which says distinguish between stable and radioactive isotopes and describe conditions under which a nucleus is unstable. So before we start, I'm going to give you a quick sort of analogy of a uh, radioactive and stable isotope. So if you can imagine this old lady here, we're just in her natural state, caring nothing, um, just being herself. So this is what this, the stable isotope. And if you give her lots of bags, and she's carrying way too much, is the radioactive isotope. And what a radioactive isotope does over time, it decays. And the reason why it decays is because it wants to go back to its normal stable state. So in this case, you can imagine that the decaying part is the sort of dropping of her, of her bags, dropping of groceries. And she does that to get back to her stable state. The stable state is, is normal, the neutral one. And a radioactive isotope means that she's carrying too much. And there'll be some way for her to get rid of that too muchness to get back to her stable state. So I'll actually cover the first part. Um, we need to know what also not, need to know what an isotope is. So I'll explain that as well. But before we start, I want to make sure we go over something which is from year 11, which was the atomic mass. So right here we have a couple of different things. We've got carbon, which is it has the atomic number of six, so which means here we've got six protons in this nucleus. So the atomic number is the number of protons. And the atomic mass was the number of protons plus neutrons. So both protons and neutrons together is the atomic mass. And if you remember the reason why, we have our protons weigh each, weighs one atomic mass unit. Our neutrons also weigh as one atomic mass unit, so they're exactly the same. Whereas our electrons, the other parts that make up an atom, they weigh almost nothing, so a tiny amount, which means overall the mass, this is the weight, right? The mass of a atom is its protons plus its neutrons combined. They weigh the same amount. Whereas the electrons, because they're so small, they can kind of be ignored. And that was the atomic mass. So atomic mass is protons plus neutrons, the atomic number is just the protons. So because I, the reason why we need to know this is because we need to know that when it comes to isotopes. So what an isotope is, is we have carbon in each of these examples, right? So we've got carbon here, carbon there, carbon here. This is, if you count the number of protons and neutrons, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, six protons. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, six neutrons. Now, if what kind of carbon would that be? Again, it has its atomic mass, which is uh, neutrons plus protons. So 6 plus 6 equals 12. So the atomic mass, which is in purple, is 12. Its proton number or atomic number is 6. So it's this carbon 12. So we call this carbon 12. So this here is carbon 12. Now, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six protons. So the blue dots were six. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven neutrons. So again, what kind of carbon would that be? That's six plus seven for the atomic mass is 13. And the protons stay the same, so still six protons. So this is carbon 13. We call it carbon 13. This one is carbon 13. Um, and then here we've got neutrons and protons again, we're counting them. So one, two, three, four, five, six for the protons. The blue dots are six protons. And the green dots, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight neutrons. So again, eight plus six, that's 14. So we have carbon, 14. And six has the atomic number, so carbon 14 and six. And with all of these, this is the carbon 14 one. Some have too much and some are stable. Right? We mentioned earlier that the grandma drops her bags is the unstable one. Carbon 12, which the majority of our carbon is carbon 12, 
that is stable. Carbon-13 is still more or less stable, still stable. So it has a bit, carrying a bit more, but still stable. Whereas carbon-14 is unstable. So this is the one that will eventually drop some of, of their protons, uh, their neutrons, to get back to that stable state. And the reason why, so it, it says distinguish between stable and radioactive isotopes and describe conditions under which a nucleus is unstable. It's all about this ratio of protons to neutrons. So proton to neutron ratio should ideally be 1 to 1 for any element that has atomic number of less than 20. So that should be 1 to 1. If it's slightly above, that's still sometimes okay. With the example of um, carbon-13 that has not a 1 to 1 ratio, but it's still stable. But ideally, it is carbon-12, um, which has a 1 to 1 ratio, is stable. Right? Then carbon-13 is somewhat less stable, but still overall stable enough. Whereas carbon-14, because it has um, 8, 6 protons and 8 neutrons, that ratio is bigger than 1 to 1. That would be something like 1 to 1.25. That's too big, which means it becomes unstable. What we have here is the atom building software. And there's a link in the descriptions below. And I would recommend to check it out because it's actually a really good software. But what we have here is carbon, the atom carbon. And it has, at the moment, six protons and six neutrons. So this ratio of protons to neutrons is 1 to 1. But what we'll do is actually we'll add some neutrons to this carbon so to increase its ratio. So if we add one, it's still stable. So it says stable. At the moment, it has seven neutrons and six protons. So this ratio is slightly above one to one. But if we add another one, so now we have eight neutrons and six protons, it becomes unstable. And what the carbon does, because now it's a radioisotope, right? so an isotope is something that has a different ratio of carbon of neutrons to protons, especially more neutrons, adding more neutrons or removing neutrons. And right now it's unstable. So what it will do is actually it will remove the ones which make it unstable. Either going from um, 12 carbon, uh, from 14 carbon, which is a radioisotope, to 13 carbon, or back to 12 carbon. The majority of it is 12 carbon, which means it has six protons and six neutrons. But this was when we increased our neutrons. But if we have less neutrons and protons, which what I'll do now, I'll remove one of the actual neutrons, so I have five neutrons and six protons, you can see that it also becomes unstable. Right? So now it's 11 carbon, so it has five neutrons and six protons, and it's also unstable. So in this case, it would actually try to uh, get back to that stable state. So that was the radioisotope, and this is the normal uh, version, the stable version. Now, it's important that we're only dealing with neutrons because what happens actually if we add another proton, you can see the symbol here and the elements over here, have a look at that. If we add another proton to it, it will actually change the, um, the element. So it, now it's nitrogen. So the only thing we change when it comes to radioisotopes is neutrons, not protons. And here we have a graph. We have a pretty nice graph. And what you can see, these are the, so it's got atomic number on the one side, the atomic number here. And it has it has number of neutrons on this side. So what we can see is that we have twenty is roughly here. So from here to there is twenty, and anything that has an atomic mass, so proton number of twenty or less, the ideal ratio for those is one to one, so one proton for every one neutron. Whereas if we go above that, you can see this is the one to one line, this black line here. But this black line is the ideal ratio line. So as soon as it leaves a 20 mark and goes above 20, the actual ratio is also different. So in this case, the ratio actually becomes more to the one to 1.5 ratio. So if anything above, so I'm gonna write above um, 20, so that's the number 20, which means atomic number of 20. It tends to go towards that 1 to 1 1.5 ratio for it to be stable. Um, 
And then there's a cutoff point. This is about at after uranium, so after 82. Anything about after 82, so this part here, is unstable. Even if the ratio is okay, there's no ratio which makes it stable. So all of them are unstable. So that's uranium. Anything after uranium is unstable. And the reason why is because if you think about it, these protons generally have plus attached. So these are plus, and that means they would usually repel. So each of these blue dots has a plus, and they would usually repel. But the good thing is because there's something called a strong force, and this strong force strongly binds all of them together. So it's really only by close distances, but it's so strong that even that repulsion won't repel it. So it'll just lock it in together. Right? And then for generally for them to have a certain ratio, one to one for um, atomic number of less than 20, and one to 1.5 for atomic numbers of greater than 20, that's good enough to keep them in place. But if it goes too high or too low that ratio, that means this force is not strong enough to keep them, to keep them together and then decay happens. Okay, so that is what a radioisotope is. And what happens when they decay is there's a couple of things that happen. We've got alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma decay. I'm just going to quickly go over them. Um, in alpha decay, we have the removal of helium nuclei. This here is a helium nuclei. It has the atomic mass number of four, and of those four, two are protons. So it's got two protons and two neutrons in its nuclei. It's a, we don't lose any electrons if we do this. It's only the protons and neutrons we get, that we get rid of. In this case, the ratio, this is a too big. So it's got 86, which is above 82. So it's too big, which means over time it will decay. What will happen when it decays, it will get, because it's alpha, Decay. Alpha decay is the removal of the helium nuclei. It will go from 2 to 2, which is its atomic mass, to 86, which is its atomic number, to 218, so 218 and 84. So it's gotten rid of 4 of this here. So minus 4 for the atomic mass and minus 2 for the atomic number. And it's done this to get smaller, to reduce its size. And this is polonium, but even, even polonium is still too big, and over time it will decay even more get back to less than 82 for its atomic mass number, atomic number. Um, so that's alpha decay. In alpha decay, we get rid of a helium particle. In beta decay, a neutron decays into a proton. So this might be if we have too many protons. Uh, sorry, too many neutrons in the case of beta. So that's for beta. So we can see this element, which has an atomic mass of 97 and a proton number of 40. It will increase 1, so it will gain 1 proton. It will do so by changing a neutron into a proton. So the atomic mass will stay the same, because that's the combination of neutrons plus protons. And all it's done is taken one of those neutrons and change it into a proton. And we also lose an electron in the process as well. Right, so that's beta decay. And then we've got gamma decay. And gamma decay is simply the energy. So it's often the, so as I wrote, often the companies are other type of radiation. So this is energy itself. So for example, here we've got an example of um, beta radiation. We've got atomic mass of 60. We have the atomic number of, of 27, that's cobalt. So it's going to gain one proton. And it's done so because it's changed one of its neutrons into a proton. So that's, that's beta decay to have that better ratio. It also loses an electron as well. That's All of this is still beta decay. But on top of that, we have, in many cases, gamma radiation. So this is the radiation part. And this just means we have like energy released. So this is energy being released from the actual nuclei. There's no change. There's no change in anything. This is just energy being released. So I'll summarize these three again. We've got alpha decay, which is a removal of a helium particle. You try to often happens for the ones which have too too high atomic number. You try to get to lower atomic number. We have beta decay, which means that one of the pro neutrons will decay into a proton. And it often happens if we have a ratio which is not ideal. 
and we have gamma decay, which is just the removal of energy, which often accompanies, which comes along with either alpha or beta decay. And we said when isotope was something that has the same proton number, so the same atomic number, but a different amount of neutrons. So in the case, we have got 12 carbon, 13 carbon, or 14 carbon. And the ones which are radioisotopes are usually ones which have a not ideal proton to neutron ratio, such as when it comes to ones which have an atomic mass, so atomic number of less than 20. It should be one to one, the ratio of protons to neutrons for the ideal stable state. And for ones which have one above 20, so 20 to 82, that ratio is now um, one proton f for every 1.5. So this is what's the 1.5. So one proton for every 1.5 uh, is the ideal for anything above 20. But if it's above 82, that means it's just way too big, so they're all unstable. So if it has an atomic number of more than 82, it's just going to get rid of whatever it has to try to get back to a normal state. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.